Welcome to the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I am your teacher and host, Eddie Hyatt. We're continuing our theme today of Jesus, the true liberator of women. And uh, we're continuing to talk about Jesus and his encounter with the woman of Samaria and what incredible revelations he shared with her. And of course, as, as we pointed out in our previous episodes, it was not culturally permissible and acceptable for him to be talking to a woman in public, much less a Samaritan woman, because Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. And so uh, it, it was culturally so unacceptable what Jesus did. But I'm glad that he does things culturally unacceptable. And when you know him, as your Lord and your Savior, and you take on his heart and his compassion for this lost and fallen world, you too will do things and reach out to people in ways that may be culturally <laughs> unacceptable, but it's because God wants to lift up sinful and fallen humanity. He wants to save us and lift us up. And help us to be all he has created us to be and to spend eternity with him. Now, this woman, the Samaritan woman, was the first person that Jesus revealed himself to as the Messiah. According to, to what we read in the Gospels, we don't read, read of him before this revealing himself to any person as the Messiah. And this took place, I believe it is down. And uh, the, it's in verse 20, um, where she said, no, it's verse 25. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. So the Samaritans, even though they were this mixed race and they had some strange doctrines mixed in with, with their Jewish teachings, they believed in the coming Messiah. And she said to him, I know that Messiah is coming and then John, in, in commenting, in per, it's in parentheses in the scripture, says, who is called Christ. Here's something to remember. Christ is not the last name of Jesus. Christ is a title. But it is the Greek counterpart to the Hebrew Messiah. Now, the Messiah is God's appointed one. It is the one God has chosen and appointed to rule in Israel and the entire world and the entire universe. The Messiah is God's chosen one, God's anointed, appointed one to rule. And Israel was looking for the Messiah. The Samaritans were looking for the Messiah. But they were looking for a political, militaristic Messiah because they were thinking all in the natural who would save them from the Romans. The hated Romans who had conquered them, and they were living under the ultimate authority of Rome. But there was a greater master over Israel and the entire human race that they needed deliverance from. And it was a, a, a more severe slave master than Rome and his legions. They needed to be delivered from Satan and from sin. And Jesus came in his first coming, not to bring Israel physical deliverance from the Romans, but to bring them and all humanity deliverance from that terrible slave master Satan and from the sin that he had brought the human race under. I remember the angel Gabriel said to Mary, you shall call his name Jesus, uh, Hebrew would be Yeshua, and it means God saves. You shall call his name Yeshua, or, you know, our English counterpart is Jesus, for he shall save. And that word means to deliver. He shall deliver his people from their sins. My friends, the first thing God wants to save you from is from your sins. 
You see, it's your sins that are destroying you. So Jesus wants to free you from that, that, that slave master. He wants to deliver you from sin and set you free and make you his witness. He is God's chosen Messiah. He is God's chosen deliverer. And you will never find deliverance. You will never find salvation any place else other than Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah, God's chosen an appointed savior, deliverer, governor, and ruler. All oh, turn to him today. So the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Notice what Jesus said. First time he's revealed himself like this to anybody. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. <laughs> I'm laughing because Jesus up to this time, he has not made himself known in this way to Peter to James, to John, to the high priest, to the synagogue rulers, but to this lowly Samaritan woman. He makes himself known as the Messiah, as God's chosen deliverer for Israel. And also we know the world. So what an incredible revelation she receives. Now here this tells us, all my friends, you may feel like you're the lowliest of the low. You may, you, you, you may see preachers and priests in their religious garb and up on platforms and so on. And you may feel like, oh, they must be so close to heaven. No, they're not any closer than you are if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ. Because there is only one con connection with God. And that is Jesus Christ. As my wife Susan likes to say, the ground is level at the cross. And here is this lowly Samaritan woman receiving revelation that the religious leaders in Jerusalem have not received. Because their hearts are not open to it. I who speak to you am he. Now, as this conversation went on, and we talked about last week how Jesus uh, revealed to her what true worship is all about. This woman got so excited to her. And verse 28 says she left her water pot. <laughs> She'd come there to draw water. But man, man, when you encounter Jesus, there's a lot of things in life that lose their, their sense of value and purpose and interest. When you really encounter Jesus, a lot of things in life will not just, will not interest you any longer. She left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the men. Now, in the Greek, the word is anthropos. It's not andros. Andros is the word for men as males. Anthropos is the word for uh, people, both men and women. So she went into the city and said to the people, literally to the people, come see a man who told me all things I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples came to him saying, Rabbi or teacher, eat. We've got some food here. And he said to them, I have food to eat, which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to him or said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? They don't understand. You know, they, 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 they so think in the natural, they, so often they miss what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, I have food to eat of which you do not know. And then Jesus went on to say, my food is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Jesus was saying, you know, I receive. Just like in the natural, there is a satisfaction when you're hungry and you eat. Jesus was saying there is a deeper satisfaction that I receive in doing the will of God. There's a satisfaction down in my soul, down in the core of my being, a satisfaction that comes. I have food to eat you don't know anything about. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Oh, my friends, there is a satisfaction, a deep satisfaction in Jesus for both men and women you will never find anyplace else. And then he said to his disciples, do not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they're already white for harvest. And I think what Jesus is saying to them, hey, you see this Samaritan woman. 
This is somebody you would not come near. You would avoid them like the plague. But Jesus saw it differently. This is the harvest. These are the people God is wanting to reach. And he says, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look. Take the blinders off. Don't say it's four months and then comes the harvest. Probably in the natural, it was four months till harvest. He said, hey, the, the, the fields are ripe now. And Jesus saw this Samaritan woman and her whole people there. The ones that the, the, the Jews would have nothing to do with. The ones that the, his disciples would avoid like the plague. Jesus is saying, hey, lift up your eyes and look. Take the blinders off. The fields are ripe to harvest. Oh, I believe this is a message for the church today. Maybe the people that we are repulsed by. Maybe God would help us to see that they, they actually consist of a great harvest. Lord, open our eyes today to the harvest that is all around us. We pray in the name of Jesus. And then verse 39 says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. Ah, isn't it something? Now, Jesus didn't say to this woman, Oh, woman, I don't, I don't want you going out there and representing me. This kind of life that you have lived, I don't want you out there representing me. No, she was so excited. I am sure her life was totally transformed and she was never the same. And I have no doubt that she, you know, even after Jesus rose from the dead, she was a part of that great company of women, maybe among those who followed him to Jerusalem and were there uh, at the cross and at the tomb. Who knows? But there is no doubt that she was a powerful witness for him and probably helped prepare the way for a great revival that we read about in Acts chapter 8, where the Bible says that Philip... This is after the resurrection. This is in the book of Acts. Went down to Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the whole city, the whole region turned to God. There were great miracles and a mighty work of the Holy Spirit. There's no question in my mind that this lowly Samaritan woman prepared, helped prepare the way for that mighty move of God that came after the resurrection of Jesus and after the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Oh, my friends, if Jesus would be so kind and so gracious to this lowly Samaritan woman, oh, he will be kind and gracious to you today. And, and, and people are talking about uh, gender equality, equality for women all over the world. I want to tell you, you'll never find it outside of Jesus, because Jesus and only Jesus is the true liberator of women. I'm Eddie Hyatt. This is the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue this theme. In the meantime, check out my wife's book, Susan Hyatt, 10 Things Jesus Taught About Women. It's only $5. It's available on Amazon. I think it's also probably available on our website, eddiehyatt.com. But go to Amazon, if you prefer, and uh, just enter Susan Hyatt or 10 Things Jesus Taught About Women, little book that will change your life. It's been spread all over the world. And uh, God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.